All right, I've been off for a week. We had a nice storm here in Texas. I wasn't working. All my gear just sat in the truck, actually both of my vehicles, until it's warmed up. So I'm sorting through it now. Last time I sold gear was in 2019 and the walls are closing in and around me and it's a, again time to let go of some kit that I'm not using. I've got that storage unit and everything that's in storage is pretty much once or twice a year items. And uh, as I mentioned before, that storage unit got broken into. So yeah, it's time to get rid of some things. My audio kit is rapidly outgrowing my mixer shelf and the single drawer in my toolbox. So this has been my support bag for the, uh, the last audio job that I did. I'm slowly putting things away, but I got to figure out, I think I need to make another shelf in the truck, maybe right here. And I'll have that secondary audio bag right there. So look at all my gym clothes in the truck from my California trip. All right, so slowly unloading. Had some wet sandbags, letting those dry. Get the rear end basically reset to default. Two apertures, gimbal, 21 inch monitor, two FX9s, five and one reflectors, stand rack, and then the ramp goes right here for the tool chest. Teleprompter will go back into my garage on standby. And slowly sorting through things here. I have this seat that needs to go in my daily driver. I've had it for a couple of months. I just haven't taken the time to wrench on it and swap it out. So it's in the way. All right, so first up, I'm gonna let go of my Magliner Senior. I think that thing's like 20 years old. That cart has just been old reliable for me. And now the ProMaster, the way I have it configured, is just not uh, the right cart for my build. So I'm gonna put it up for sale. I think on Facebook Marketplace to start. Shooting a lot of commercials. I bought my own set of Motorola radios. These are BPR 40s. They're the VHF band. And these are eight channel radios, but I'm only on the six MERS channels, which do not require an FCC license. And what's cool about MERS is because it's VHF, most people are running UHF, which has better wall penetration. VHF, eh, less so, but it's still pretty good. They're four watt on VHF versus five watt UHF. Uh, these have better range outdoors, a little bit reduced range indoors. However, we, on set, I never ran into an issue, even if we're uh, in like an office tower and we're like separated by one or two stories. Uh, they work great, but uh, anyway, yeah, I think I'm gonna sell them. I have no idea what these are worth and I'm just charging up the batteries. I would imagine all of these batteries are gonna to need to be replaced. There's a kind of third party brand replacement batteries. I think these are like $10 a piece, maybe $20. So batteries are reasonable. Anyway, if you're interested in 12 walkies in a custom case with a charger, it needs a little bit of love. One of the um, chargers isn't getting power. There's actually a terminal block back here you just take this cover off and I'm sure it's just one of the terminals worked its way loose so that unit's not getting charging but uh, yeah I don't know I'll price it out if you're interested before I put it up on the marketplace uh, let me know it's in a Pelican 1600 you can basically ship self-contained I was quite happy with how this design when I first bought these I had two Motorola quad six bank chargers and they use these like huge power supplies, like the size of this black thing. And uh, it required two Pelican cases, six radios per Pelican. So I was able to make my own, basically using these individual charging units and a third party power supply, 12 volt power supply. I was able to get 12 radios and one Pelican, one half the footprint in the truck. Yeah, these have been great. I continue to use them. They use the standard uh, two prong Motorola connector. Um, but yeah, I just don't shoot many spots nowadays. And when I do get on bigger productions, they're like really big and productions handing out radios and frequency coordination. I love this lens. When I was shooting a lot of celebrities and pro athlete promo content, almost always in a studio on a dolly. 
and basically we'd have several hours to set up but you'd only get maybe as little as 15 minutes with your celebrity and you got to shoot out all your frame sizes and coverage we have a couple cameras rolling typically with 10 to 1 zooms the rental we'll go to is the optimo 24 to 290 and i couldn't afford that but the 30 to 300 was a little bit more attainable and then i also use this for shooting just pro sports stuff feature assignments uh, covering games, football, I did some gymnastics, and golf. But uh, now I only use it like twice a year on the, the bull riding assignment. So I think I'm going to put this up and see if I get any bites. Um, it, you can't run it on lightweight 15. The diameter of the barrel is just too big. So here is my Studio 15 Bridge RE offset style. This is my Amira shoulder plate. And then I also have, uh, actually this is stuff that's going to go with, it uh, goes with my, an Amira, not the lens, but the BP-8, which is the Studio 19 base that is compatible with uh, Amira, what is this thing called? BPA 3 sliding dovetail. And then I've got a 12 inch dovetail in here with a touch and go sockler. But uh, yeah, this is all Amira stuff. Just just the lens and a set of 19 mil rods. But I gotta research this and see what uh, the market rate is. I can't imagine there are too many on the market. It's such a specialty lens. Beautiful, super sharp, awesome lens. Cine style, calibrated witness marks. Look at this, you get every couple inches, you get another accurate hash mark for traditional focus pulling. And this ramps, um, it's T2.95 until you get to 240 millimeter, and from 240 to 300, you lose a little bit. I forget what it stops down to. I think it's like a 3.1. It's not much. I forget. You can look the specs up. Uh, awesome glass. Heavy. Need an assistant when you're shooting this thing. I did cover some golf um, events, PGA, where I was running solo with a golf cart, and that was brutal on my back. This one stings a little bit. In 2023, this would still be my go-to preferred camera for every shoot that uh, isn't on a gimbal. Just like the most pleasing colors and skin tones with the least amount of effort is any RE camera, sensor technology, color science. These things are awesome. And the other thing with the Amira is it's the only camera I've used in the last I don't know, 15 years that doesn't require a rig. They just got it right for the owner operator, solo camera operator, shoulder design, you can undersling it. Yeah, it's a little heavy, a little bulky. I do kind of wish they'd made a version that was like, um, maybe like a carbon fiber and more of a plastic body. Cause these are, these are like rental house grade. They're bulky cameras. But man, the thing they did right is the top handle with this very robust viewfinder bracket. I wish my FX9s had a bracket like this. It's like you can orient it wherever you need it and lock everything in. And this can be a hand grip, a stability point, or you can use your head to press in to stabilize the camera. You can lock this thing in so it's not going to move you know, telescopes and rotates and various directions to get it the eyepiece right where you want it so you're not getting any neck cramp you're not looking up not looking down you can keep your face level I'm struggling to do this with one hand and then based on the weight of the battery and accessories and lens map box foregrips whatever you have on there you can change the center of gravity of the camera by sliding the top handle which moves the viewfinder and then the shoulder paddle shoulder pad also has its own integrated dovetail. So kind of with my 17 to 120, the default position for CG is, gosh, again, I'm struggling with one hand. I have the shoulder pad about here with a uh, 95 watt hour battery, 17 to 120 would balance perfectly. And then, yeah, I'd say the eyepiece was probably about there. And then perfectly balanced CG on the shoulder. And also when you grab the top handle, it's also perfectly balanced for easy carry. Wonderful cameras. I'd say the negatives in 2023 are, it only shoots ProRes. Uh, actually in 1080, it'll shoot the Sony 50 megabit codec. I did do some broadcast assignments in 50 megabit for a quick turn or feeding to a tape out in a truck. 
but it's basically a ProRes camera. So if you're doing like the corporate stuff, long interviews, lots of B-roll or any event coverage, the files get massive in UHD or 3.2K. And then if you're running two cameras, like I can't do the one man band with two Amiras on like a corporate interview. I mean, I can handle the, the camera kit, but they burn through batteries quickly. You get about 40 minutes on a hypercore and then but the media is like you need someone who's offloading at a minimum at lunchtime and then like every hour hour and a half after lunch to get out on time otherwise like i had a few jobs where i spent hours in a parking lot offloading footage after wrap so uh, more efficient codec is kind of a a problem for the corporate type assignments in 2023 but boy if you're a filmmaker commercial shooter music videos even the like indie feature stuff these things are just awesome. So yeah, I think I'm gonna let them go. This was my number one. I bought this new. It was $60,000 from Abel Cine in 2014. And then I picked this one up used. It came from Hawaii Camera in Honolulu. They were the original owner. I bought it through a broker. And it was 45K US. And I'm trying to remember the year. I don't know if it was 2017 or 18. I think somewhere around there, 17 or 18. My ACAM has the upgraded uh, Model 2 audio board that's got more, uh, uh, it's got attenuation settings for line input, whereas the B cam, I didn't upgrade the audio board. So it's, there's no attenuation adjustment when you're line level. Uh, and you can do four channel audio, which is also a cool thing on the Amira that I used a few times. It's a five pin, two channel, and then you've got two traditional three pin XLRs. And you can also do AES in on the three pins, which I've never done. And then you can route those inputs to any channel on the panel here. So it's not like five pin left is always one and five pin right is always two, three, three four, and so on. You can literally uh, route anything to anywhere, which is pretty cool. User buttons are nice. I do wish this had more of a, a feedback style record button. I had a habit of uh, double tapping sometimes because there's just so little travel on the roll button. But, um, awesome cameras, I love them. Actually, I'll grab a battery. Let's see where my hours are on each of these. Let's see, Amira One, uh, info, I'm probably a little behind on this software too. I don't even know. Um, where's ours? Oh, system info. 2,800 hours. Oh, the clock's wrong. And I had the sensor replaced in this one. I don't know. I got to go through the paperwork. But this had a new optical block put in it at one point. This one, a time code error. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, version info 5.4, I think that's the same version. 2,500 hours. Okay, so there's similar burn time, 2,800, 2,500. And this one's got an issue that I have not had serviced because I, I just lived with it. The If you have it on free run time code, time of day time code, it, uh, I think this error is actually because it's set to jam sync. Yeah, and there's nothing inputting. Let's just go regen, free run. So when you power down and uh, remove the battery from the camera, when you reboot, it zeroes out. It doesn't remember the code where it should. And I'm usually running a locket box, so it's never really been an issue. And then the second issue, which is related, is the run stop port on the side here. This three pin doesn't work. And I missed this when I bought it. It was bad when I bought it. And Ari didn't catch it either because I had them um, go through the camera. But at any rate, the quote I got was $3,500 to, it's the same board. They're, they just do a board swap. They don't component repair. Um, run stop and time code are on the same, excuse me, board in the camera. So yeah, $3,500, I was like, I'll just live with uh, those two minor issues, it's really rarely an issue. Maybe a couple commercials with a Preston MDR that they wanted to patch in or my Bartek can run stop there, but um, 
can't do that on this A cam. All right, an update. One Amira is sold. The second one that has the time code issue, I still have. And now I'm debating, do I send it into Ari and have it serviced? I was looking through my notes and they said up to 3,500, so the repair could be less. Or do I just sell it in the condition it's in for uh, discounted for the repair cost? I'm not sure, I'm kind of on the fence. But if you're interested in that Amira in the state it's currently in, uh, let me know. And if you're also interested after Ari's gone through it, and repaired, uh, yeah, reach out. Uh, Magliner is sold 30 to 300, currently still available.